Hello, hello. Good morning, friends. Hello. Well, we'll begin our two minute countdown here to uh, begin our live stream. So glad. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Jane. Hope John had a great uh, had a great uh, birthday yesterday. How are you? Hello, friends. Hey, John. Good morning to you. How oh, is everybody today? Glad you're here. Part of this journey. All right, all right. All right, all right. Hey, Deb. <laughs> I just saw Deb. That's great. Hello. Hi, everybody. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone? Great you're here. All right. Hey, Sharon. John, please keep Jamie in your prayers as she waits for a test to determine cause of her hip. Oh, goodness. Sure will. We will pray for her. It's been such a battle for her. Cecile, good morning to you. Glad you're here. Got everybody. Who is everybody? All right. Went to Littleton, New Hampshire diner. Thank you. Excellent. That's great. That sounds like a perfect little birthday feast. All right, friends, let's begin this morning on this, the ninth day of March at 2022 on this Wednesday. Glad you're here. Glad you're a part of our 1111 journey and this. We're going to start this morning. Um, I want to read part of the book of Jude. No one ever reads Jude. And I, that's, it's a really rich little book. It's actually one of the smallest, if not the smallest book in the New Testament. Um, I should probably know that. But it is uh, it, it's like, like a page. Um, but it is this little letter that Jude, okay, Jude, by the way, was Jesus' brother. So Jesus had other brothers james and but he had uh, some other brothers too one of which was jude and jude ends up and the thing is is his other brothers aren't disciples of jesus they don't follow jesus they're like oh yeah the, the, jesus you know like you know kind of double he's our crazy squirrely brother until the resurrection and with the resurrection, they become uh, followers of Jesus and followers of him as the Messiah that has come. So, you know, if you ever needed kind of evidence for your, you know, that, that uh, you know, how do we know, you know, Jesus uh, was actually rose from the dead? It's like it, that's about what it would take for siblings to actually follow another sibling. Really, let's be honest. Um, so a bunch of brothers to actually get along like that, that that Jesus ends up um, uh, that that Jude ends up becoming a uh, a missionary for Jesus telling the story and and he writes to this church we don't know that the church is but he writes to this church about these and, and it's this little missive that he fires off because he was going to fire off a longer he, he says i'm gonna i'm gonna i was gonna send you something longer but 
actually, I, I need to address what's going on right here. I need I need you to hear this. And so he, he sends off like this one pager, you know, like, boom, like, um, and it's really beautiful and it's really brilliant. If you if you uh, go in and tease out some of the some of the the ancient symbolism that he's using and some of the some of the uh, the, the deep uh, scripture that he's drawing on, there's, there's all kinds of beautiful stuff in there and uh, from anywhere from the book of Enoch to Proverbs and anything in between. But he, what he's addressing is the fact that there are these teachers that have become a part of this, uh, this church and that they're bad teachers. But the thing is, is he said, may say they're bad teachers, but what he doesn't say is what the problem with their teaching was. Like, that's not the problem. What he says is the problem is, is with their life, is that they're they're uh, they're what what um, uh, what some called a Nicolaitans, uh, who are you know became followers of Nicholas, one of the uh, the early um, uh, um, one of the early church fathers, church leaders, and the the Nicolaitans they had an interesting think on it because they're like okay we're saved in Christ and so that means we can pretty much do what we want, and so they would visit the temple prostitutes. They were uh, they would live lives of debauchery and and uh, they that that for the Nicolaitans everything was permissive because Christ had won the battle so it didn't really matter how I behaved or if I was if I was uh, um, but you know I could pretty much um, you know it, uh, I could ha- you know we could have a lot of fun a lot of fun like um, you know and. And things that even, you know, we would not even consider fun in terms of when we talk about the pagan world of the first century. And so he writes this, and we never find out in the page what their problem with their teaching was. They were bad teachers, but it, because they were, because he, that wasn't his concern. His concern was how they were living their lives and what they were doing with their days and how they were how they were uh, debasing themselves, debasing the people around them, um, using one another and each other for pleasure and for that for uh, uh, destruction. And uh, and and I, you know, I think this is a brilliant point. I think it's it's so powerful. You know, you can you it, I, literally again the book of Jude is one page. You can go read it and and. And I, I and but I but I it it struck me as I was as I was looking it over that 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 even though like they didn't care what the the bad teaching was it wasn't about doctrine it wasn't about you know how many angels can dance in the head of a pin or whether we you know have the you know uh, you know consanguineal transubstantiation or what not, none of that it was about how are we moving through the world? And are you moving through the world in a way that is embodying the way of Christ? That's that's trying to trying to find connection and walk in the path of this Jesus guy, or are you using that to kind of kind of take advantage of the things uh, in and around them? Uh, it, it you know it's it, it's it's such a powerful point, and so I, I want to read you the the conclusion of of Jude. Um, you know, as he kind of, and because he invites them, he invites the the church to kind of reject these teachers and to persevere. And he says it this way. He says, but dear friends, remember what the apostles of the Lord Jesus foretold. They said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the people who divide you who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others from by snatching them from the fire. To others show mercy, mixed with fear, hating even the clothing, stained by corrupted flesh. And then he goes on to offer them a blessing. So that now I, I want 
I'm going to tease this out just a little bit with if you'll if you'll indulge me with it because I I think there's a there's there's more going on here than just you know um, uh, the his is the crying against sexual immorality because hear what he says he says they said to you in the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires and these are the people who will divide you friends we're living in an age right now that has I, I I mean I that has more division in it more red blue more war not war more uh avenging or not avenging more vax or not vax uh, uh the divisions are everywhere and that these divisions come not from the but from the uh the, that the, the some people having it right and other people not having it right wrong but it comes from this these natural instincts that and that uh, the, these base kind of things that that dwell in each one of us again doesn't make us bad people just makes us people but these these base desires that and, and not i'm not just talking about sexual desires i'm talking about kind of our our desire to be right our desire to be in control our desire for power our desire to 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 rule over another person all, all of those things we all got them and that do, and that and that to not let that be tempered by the spirit to not let that let that, that let the spirit take the lead on our lives in it and his injunction to us his invitation to us the the antidote he brings up is mercy mercy be merciful to those who doubt those those maybe whom you're in your disagreement with save people from the fire if you find people on fire if you find people in pain you find people in hurt snatch them up hold them show mercy to others he says it again mixed with fear and casting out anything that is that seems to be corrupt friends i think jude's little letter uh, has way more to offer us these days than uh, we might uh, initially look at first blush, because I think that 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 what our world needs now is a little more mercy with each other. What I could use from all of you, and what you all could use from me, is a little more mercy from each other. Is a little more desire to to simply. Look for the spirit. Look for something a little bigger than ourselves, rather than those base natural instincts that are that are just right there in our gut, ready to take over whenever we we uh, we get scared or afraid or angry or fired up. This life of Christ, I think, is really is the life of mercy. It doesn't mean just going around and having to be nice to people all the time. That's not, not the point. But it's this way of, of, of embodying grace rather than, uh, rather than uh, accumulating to ourselves, uh, you know, all the desires because, you know, we're saved and because God loves us and we're, cause we're a good person and, you know, mom loves us and, uh, you know, all those things that, that we can tell ourselves in the midst of this. But just this ability step in reject what doesn't work and offer mercy i want to close i want to leave you today with this beautiful little poem by uh, by ellen bass it it, it uh, it's called if you knew and i think it, it's one of these things that you know, in these days of our lives, we're going around with so many assumptions about the people we encounter, so many ideas about what we think we know, about what's going on, about what we think we know is going on at an international level, what we think is going on at a personal level, and another person, we think we're going on at a church level, what we think we're going on in, uh, you know, with, you know, me as your pastor or, or, uh, or with your, you know, with your spouse, with the people that you love, you know, we think we know. And yet, so often that that that's running through a filter of you know all of our little natural instincts, our little base things down on the bottom of our belly that that just want to kind of kind of get out and rule the world and 
please ourselves and all those manner of things. So this is a poem. I leave it with you today called If You Knew. What if you knew you'd be the last to touch someone? If you were taking tickets, for example, in a, at a theater and tearing them, giving back the ragged stubs, you might take care to touch that palm, brush your fingertips along the lifeline's crease. When a man pulls his wheeled suitcase too slowly through the airport, when the car in front of me doesn't signal, when the clerk at the pharmacy won't say thank you, I don't remember they're going to die. A friend told me that she'd been with her aunt and they'd just had lunch and the waiter, a young gay man with plum black eyes, joked as he served his coffee and kissed her aunt's powdered cheek when they left. Then they walked half a block, and her aunt dropped dead on the sidewalk. How close does the dragon spume have to come? How wide does the crack in heaven have to split? What would people look like if we could see them as they are, soaked in honey, stung and swollen, reckless, pinned against time? Spend a little time with Jude these days, friends, and have a little mercy now. All right. Peace and grace, my friends. We'll pick it up tomorrow with another 11-11.